slight sequel to the uh, last video I did talking about my friend uh, who I, I talked a lot of shit in that video about like his belief system because I was mad and guess what I'm gonna talk even more shit because I'm still kind of mad so uh, like I've never if you didn't know this about me sorry but like, like if uh, if you believed otherwise you're mistaken but I've never well that's not true I've never no, I don't agree with the social justice ideology for lack of a better term to put it i don't think anyone really has a good term but you know what i'm talking about you know sjw's these people who are like hyper progressives who are like oh oppression racism sexism blah 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 and just shout at fucking everything and go on about fucking male white privilege and blah 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 you know what i mean Regardless of what you call it, and I do think the fact that there's really not a consistent agreed upon term that we can all kind of agree like this is like when I say this, this is what you know I mean. Because the term SJW gets thrown around a lot and I do agree with that, that it doesn't really, like people misuse it to the point where it kind of loses value as a descriptive term f when uh, used to designate a group of people that it's that's the purpose of the term in the first place so like that agenda oriented mentality isn't something I have a lot of respect for and I'll like you, you know, the only reason that I, like, go on and on about it, if you follow me on Twitter, because that's where I do this, I don't really do it on the gameplay videos, because I like to keep the videos about relevant shit, <laughs> uh, and I don't think uh, this subject matter, it, like, the only time it's I ever really bring it up is when it's relevant to the game at hand. Like, I'll make fucking jokes about fucking Arnita Sarkeesian calling something sexist over something completely inconsequential uh, to poke fun at it. But, like, uh, the reason I do go on and on about it on, like, uh, kind of a, 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 an expressionist level is because it's the mentality that get that has a lot of social power right now. And what I mean by that, because the entire foundation of this ideology is that they don't have power, that they're marginalized, that they're oppressed, that they're underrepresented, that they're minorities. And there is a lot of uh, merit to that viewpoint, because in America, white people are still the majority of the population, uh, because of statistics. <laughs> Uh, so, like, the, the, the suggestion of saying that these people complaining that they uh, are a minority and are underrepresented and are oppressed, uh, it's not untrue. Uh, uh, so, the suggestion of saying that they're the ones in power sounds uh, wrong, right? But here's what I mean by it is they're the ones who don't face any criticism. That's what I mean when I say they have the social power right now, is no one says anything against them. Whereas if you compare, like, say, Christianity or religion, everyone makes fun of that. Christianity and religion, the right-wing, traditionally right-wing uh, ideologies that they shove... If you look around, no one gives any respect to religion. No one gives any respect to right-wing values. Uh, whenever it even gets brought up to any degree, it's completely laughed off. It's completely mocked, derided, and usually demonized. Whereas the, the other side of the coin, the liberal version of that, this dogmatic ideology that places them at the center of the universe and everyone else is the devil... It's the same thing, but no one criticizes it. No one says anything about it. It's, it's completely off-limits to talk about. And there's things to talk about about it. But because of the, of the like, party blindness, that's one of the fucking 
big issues with the political system that we have because you're you're seen as like a traitor if you criticize your own party if you criticize the extremist individuals of your own party and liberals aren't the only ones guilty of this conservatives do it too when the tea party movement was going on when fucking bible belt religious thumpers going on you don't see uh like sane republicans popping up and saying no they're just loons like we can't really keep them out but they don't represent us no because you can't talk shit about your own party because it's complete tribalism blind loyalty to a fucking, like, a, a prescribed side in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a scam of the two-party debate that this country runs on. So, whereas the right-wing version of an, an, an ideology, agenda-driven, extremist fringe group, uh, like, super, you know, white supremacist, super religious, uh, super traditionalist sect fringe gets, gets presented as the majority, like this group of really insane people get propped up as the representation for that side, whereas the opposite, the fringe extremist psychotic group of people who think that Everyone who doesn't agree with them is the devil and wants to kill them, so take away all their freedoms because it's threatening my safety. They don't get brought up at all. They don't even get acknowledged. No one will even admit they fucking exist. And if you try and criticize them, you get attacked because you're attacking their party. So that's what I mean when I say they're the ones in power right now. So that's why they're the ones I have the most to say about. Because I resist instinctively any sort of authority. <laughs> I'm, that's just the way I am. I'm an I'm, um, anarchist. I'm anti-authoritarian. I'm very individualistic. I'm very pro-individual rights. I think everyone has the right to do, say, and think anything and whatever they want as long as they're not hurting anyone else and as long as they're not taking away that right from anyone else to do the same thing. So you can say, I don't think black people should be allowed to vote. You can say that. You can think that. It's your freedom to do that. But when you start trying to pass legislation to make take away black people's right to vote, that's when I got a problem with you. Same thing in the other direction. You can say what you want, and guess what? I can say it back. I can say, hey, I disagree with you, as long as you're not saying you're not... The, 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 the moment I start having a problem with you is when, I, is when you say you're not allowed to do that, if they're not hurting anyone. If the, it, it, because if you hurt someone, if you impose your will upon someone, then you're taking away their right to do and say and think whatever they want. If you kill someone, you've taken away their right to do and say and think whatever they want because now they're dead and they don't have that right anymore because you took it away from them. You're a fucking asshole. So that's all. So any time any organized group of power and influence tries to lay down a set of rules about what you're allowed to do and think and say, I got a fucking problem with you. So when the fucking wheel comes back around and when the spoke of the religious right comes back on top and they're the ones who aren't being criticized and they're the ones telling everyone what they're allowed to do and say they're the ones I'm going to be talking about and have a problem with. Until then, right now, as it has been, it's been the fucking social justice movement that have been the ones in social power who aren't being criticized, who think they have the right to tell everyone else what to do. <sighs> And, like, uh, I, 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 th I keep thinking back to my friend where he said, because uh, uh, he was really bummed about the election because his side didn't win. Uh, the, 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 the two sodas, Coke and Pepsi, had a popularity contest, and Coke won, but he wanted Pepsi to win, so he was really depressed and suicidal about it. I don't give a lot of merit to the presidential election of this fucking country, by the way. I don't know why everyone treats the position of president like it's a fucking monarchy. Like the president's the fucking king of America, and now they can just do whatever they want. They can just lay down from on high the laws of fucking the divine right of kings, and everyone has to do what they say. The, 
the American system of government it has a checks and balances system. We, it, why do you think, like, um, fucking, uh, one of the Supreme Court justice members, like, died or retired, I forget which one, I think it was retired, because that's way more ridiculous, it's supposed to be for life, and Obama wanted to put a new judge on there, and the Supreme Court said, no, we don't want you to do that, because the Supreme Court is right-wing, and they don't want a Democratic president putting a judge on the Supreme Court, and, like, on the one hand, that's obstructive, but on the other hand, that's the checks and balances system in action. It, you can't have one, uh, the executive, judicial, and legislative branch can't have all the power. It's evenly distributed between all three branches of governance. And I'm going to sound like an idiot, but I want to say like the presidential president is executive. Executive or legislative, and I sound like such a fucking idiot because I fucking forget which one it is. I want to say legislative is like Congress, right? The guys who make the laws because legislative, I don't know. Anyway, I'm stupid, I'm sorry, but I want to say president's executive. The executive branch is not all powerful. The executive branch doesn't get to lay down the laws from on high. It's a problem that... Every single branch of the government is Republican now because there's not going to be a lot of checking and balancing there. But guess what? The only reason that happens is because you people treat the presidency like it's the fucking monarchy of absolute power and you don't fucking show up on every two years to vote for who your representative vote for uh, who your representatives are. You don't vote for who goes into the Senate. You don't vote for who is uh, your representatives in the House of Representatives. You're, you, 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 you just show up for the presidential election because you act like that's the only one that matters, and when you have to fucking step it up and show up and vote for who, vote to, to make a blue Senate, what do you do? You stay home because, oh, the president king has already been decided. You're fucking idiots. You have no one but yourselves to blame. That's one of the big reasons I have no respect for the presidential election, because people act like it's the only one that matters, and in reality, it's the one that has the least power. It's just there to, to like, kind of uh, veto the other two, basically. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 it has uh, complete control over foreign... Uh, Issues. It, it, it can go. It can declare war. The master chief, uh, the president in chief, can declare war. That's pretty much the only absolute unchecked power he has. Everything else, everything domestic, which is what people are concerned about. None of these fucking liberals are crying and suiciding in the streets because they're worried Donald Trump's going to go to war with Russia. That's what Hillary was going to do. No, they're crying and complaining about domestic issues. They're crying and complaining that Trump is going to take away their domestic rights as citizens, and he simply can't do that. He's not allowed to do that. He needs the cooperation of the other two branches, and they're not going to give it to him because guess what? The Republican Party didn't like Trump. The only reason he got that support was because he got the popular vote in the primaries. And you can't just fucking, when they win the primaries, you can't just kick him out and replace him. They didn't want him. Like, they were on board with Trump dropping out. Every new scandal, you had re uh, Republican figures going, I'm going to pull support from fucking Trump because of latest scandal. Didn't stop him from campaigning. Every single Republican, like, uh, person in power was like, man, I can't wait for Trump to drop out. It's going to be... Oh, it's going to be weird when he runs for president and loses. None of them have his back. None of them support his positions. And the vice president can't even do shit. So I don't know what the fuck people are fucking worried about, but they are. And the thing that my friend said that fucking stuck out to me as a real prime example of what the fuck is wrong with this ideology that he's a part of is he said, half the country thinks that I'm a nigger. Half the country voted for Donald Trump because they hate black people. Half the country voted because they hate me personally. The self-absorbed, 
self-entitled, why me, the world revolves around me, everyone did this specifically to spite me view. It fuck like, really? That's what you think was on their minds when they went into that voting booth and voted for Trump? They're like, I fucking hate those niggers voting for Trump. That's what you think was on their mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally blown away and stand agape by how fucking self-absorbed and narcissistic you are to believe that. You really think that they're voting entirely out of spite against you. And you know what? I understand why he thinks that way. Because that's the mentality that the social justice ideology fosters. Because that's, that's what they tell you what to do. That's how the social justice cult operates. They operate on the system of let's take away everyone else's right because fuck them. I, we don't like them. They're making life harder for us. There's no equality in this country, so we need to drag them down. We need to take away rights from them because there's inequality. That's, that's how they think inequality can be solved, by taking things away from other people. And that gets warped into this psychotic, bizarre outlook where, haha, we took Ghostbusters away from you. Look, Ghostbusters is all girls now. We took it away from you, men. Haha. Now what? <laughs> That's how they operate. They're they're completely spiteful. They're completely uh, like self-interested and and look upon like, what they can do to make things better is making things worse for everyone who isn't them. So, of course, that's what he thinks everyone else does, too. Of course, that's what he thinks uh, Republicans did when they voted for Trump. Or when... T <sighs> The mentality that if you vote for the Democratic candidate or the Republican candidate makes you a Democrat or a Republican, that also needs to be done away with. That's He thinks that's what people did when they voted for Trump because that's what he thinks people do because that's what he thinks. Because that's what his cult tells him to think about himself and about other people. So those are his values, and as you can see, and as I already previously explained, he's completely unopened to the suggestion of anyone else's values being, uh, and I'm not just picking him out, I mean like that ideology in general, the social justice ideology, is completely uh, divorced from the idea that anyone else believes differently. Like, they can't accept the idea of people disagreeing with them. They honestly think that everyone believes the same thing they do and is just disagreeing with them out of spite. That's where that admit cis white male privilege exists comes from. He's saying, you know it does exist, but you're just not admitting it exists to, uh, to, as, a, as a personal attack against me. They think everyone else in the world sees things the way they do and is going fuck you on purpose to make things worse for them. So that's what they think everyone else is like too. That's what they think everyone else sees the world that way. So they're worried because basically they're worried that the Republicans who voted Trump into power are now going to treat them the same way they treated everyone else, and that's what they're so scared about. It's that, oh, I can't speak out against, I can't have an individual thought, because I know what happens when you have an individual thought. You get fucking attacked by your friends because I've attacked my friends for having individual thoughts. So that, that's why they're so scared, because they think that Republicans are now going to do to them what they want to do to Republicans. <laughs> and it, it strikes me as a, a standpoint, a, a, a worldview that's completely devoid of empathy. And not em empathy in the concept of being a psychopath, of where you don't have any... Uh, 
like value towards human life where you just kill people and don't think it's a big deal. I mean empathy as in the ability to put yourself into someone else's perspective. The ability to see things from someone else's point of view. Someone who disagrees with you, who you do not agree with, who you could have like uh, a screaming argument with for five hours. The ability to put yourself in their shoes and see things the way they do and try and understand where they're coming from and why they think that way. Seems like it should be a basic skill to have, but it seems completely alien to social justice ideolog ideologues because they think everyone else thinks like them. They are incapable of comprehending the idea of people thinking differently, of people simply having an alternate viewpoint or opinion because because <laughs> I, I like they, that's they because that's just how they see the world. They can't understand that other people disagree with them or have different mentalities because from their perspective they're the ones who are right and everyone else knows that they're the ones who are right and are just doing the other thing on purpose like because they're hateful because they hate them they think that these people who voted for trump didn't go into the voting booth saying like i'm scared that i'm gonna lose my job my health, like, I don't like this Obamacare shit fucking me over because I gotta support a family and kids. I'm going in there and dying in the fucking coal mines every night. I'm scared that my, like, beliefs and value system is being marginalized in this country that completely mocks my religious beliefs, that, d that, that says I'm a bad person for having those religious beliefs, that a, 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 com a culture that's leaving the value system of traditionalist marriage and all that behind, I'm scared that the way of life that I live by, the way of life that I want to raise my children to have, is going away and is being demonized. And this guy over here says, I'm going to make things better for you. I'm going to solve the problems you think exist, and I am going to make it so you don't have to be afraid anymore. No, they just hate black people. That's why they did it. That was the entire motivation. And they went in that booth, and they said, fucking niggers, and that's the end of the discussion. They don't, like, the, the, the concept that voters are going into the voting booth thinking about ways to fuck other people over. How can you have that mentality? Because that's their mentality. And they don't understand how anyone can have a different mentality. <laughs> They think everyone operates that way. They think everyone just, like, thinks the way to attain equality is to take away shit from other people. And they see those who they see as being, you know, uh, more equal than others, to put it a certain way, uh, are just the evil conglomerate people who are already in power and want to marginalize them even further because they don't want to have their power taken away. And they don't want things to be equal because they don't want to get dragged down. Not realizing, not seeming to realize that the only reason they're scared like that, the only, like, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. They see these people that they want to drag down and make things worse for as bad guys because they don't want to be dragged down and have things be made worse for them. They're defending themselves in what they think they're entitled to, same way anyone else would, because the, like, because these this ideology is coming at them and saying, Nuh-uh, you can't have that because I don't have that, so therefore you're not allowed to have that. And they're saying they're going, but it's mine. You can't take that away from me just because you don't have it. It's mine. And they think that by them saying that, they've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're bad guys like that like confirm like confirmation bias that confirmed to them beyond a shadow of a doubt that will you go by not letting me take this away from you you've proven that i need to take this away from you it's completely retarded it's just a cult it's just a cult of psychotic fucking 
like, selfish idiots who are lashing out in blind confusion. And like any cult, it's composed of people who were recruited at the stage in their life where they were young and impressionable and confused and driftless and didn't know where they wanted to go with their lives. And they get recruited into these institutions that drill this ideology into them, this way of viewing the world, and they get uh, the, any attempt to think outside of that echo chamber is uh, very brutally punished. So no one does it. And then you get situations like this happen, where this extremely fringe minority of extremists completely alienate an entire half of the population of the country, or more. Because, like, this is what liberals have really allowed to happen, is they've allowed that extremist fringe to be their voice. Just like Republicans allow extremist religious traditionalists to become their voice when they have power. It's, it's, it's a complete cycle. It goes back and forth. That's another reason I don't really respect the two-party system. I really resist bipartisanship because it presents this situation where where, where People are look we're, have an us versus them mentality. Have a this is my side and I'm the good guys, which means you must be the bad guys. And both sides are saying that and seeing the other side as the bad guys and not people. And so they pick out the extremists amongst that other group and say this is what the bad guys are saying, even though it's a very very small statistical minority of the people who are in that party. And because the sane individuals of that party aren't say, aren't being told, look at what the people who are standing next to you are saying, they're being told, look at what you're saying because you're the same party as this psycho, so that means you're both the same, and they feel the need to defend themselves and say, no, we're not. We want this, we want to make the world a better place. We want to progress the way things are and make life better for everyone. We want equality, and if you got a problem with that, obviously you're just a bad guy. And then it just goes back and forth and self perpetuates into this screaming match where you're just where it's the same people screaming at the psychotic people of the other side instead of having a fucking dialogue it's completely ass backwards i hate this entire fucking system that we've got right now i don't like it because this is the result this is what it produces look at what it produces People fucking rioting in the streets because Coke won a popularity contest over Pepsi. Fucking stupid. It's really ridiculous to me. That's really how I view it. I view it as a fucking, like, Coke or Pepsi. Which is, which is, which is your favorite soda? They both taste the same to me. <laughs> what, what color do you prefer the can? Do you prefer the can to be red or do you prefer it to be blue? There's not really a lot of difference between Republicans and Democrats to me. And I mean that both in the negative and positive ways. Because in the positive sense, I'm going, dude, we're all people. We all fundamentally want the same thing. We all want freedom and security. It's just a balance of which do you think is more important. We all want to feel like we're safe. And we all want to feel like we're free to live our lives and achieve happiness. We all want the equal opportunity to uh, be as happy as we can possibly be. And uh, resist anyone who, who wants to take that right away from us. So, they, that's what they both want. Republicans and Democrats both want the same thing. And they're both fucking assholes who just don't even listen to the other side and won't be open to any other debate or argument because they're right and everyone else is wrong. And at the higher echelons, all these politicians, regardless of which side they're on, they're all still politicians and they're greedy, money-grubbing bastards who don't give a shit about what the voters want, who don't give a shit about what the people want. They only view us as tools to perpetuate their own power and line their own pockets. So to me, I don't see any inherent 
value to having the current system we have. I don't have any respect for either side. It's literally just Coke or Pepsi. Which do you like? I don't have a preference either way. I can drink both. I can drink both equally because they're both kind of the same thing to me. Because uh, and, and and like I don't want to come across as I'm one of those people who's like I'm right and everyone else is wrong and everyone's stupid except me because I admit that I'm stupid too. I do say that everyone's wrong and everyone's stupid, but I also say, hey, I'm a fucking idiot too. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't know what's going on. All I know is what works for me. I can't speak for anyone else but myself. I know what I want, and I know what I want to do and want to happen, because that's what I think will make me happy, and I can acknowledge that everyone else has their own outlook on that. Everyone else has their own idea of what's best for them, of what will make them happy. And some of them are kind of contradictory. Some pe like, when you get right down to it, with 7 billion people on the planet Earth, to give one person what they want to make them happy, considering the limited resources we have on this planet, you are inherently going to be taking something away from someone else that would make them happy. And it's this, com it's, it's this constant struggle. The struggle is fucking real, and we're kind of all competing against one another for our own self-interest. And that's beautiful and terrifying in equal measure, and I don't want to sit here and say I'm the one with all the answers. And I really, like, flinch away from people accusing me of that, because it's not what I believe. Of course, I don't, I'm not the kind of person who says, in my humble opinion, every other second. I'm not the kind of person who says, oh, you know, I can only speak for myself every other second, because I think that goes without saying. I don't think it needs to be said, I'm not speaking for everyone, I'm just speaking for myself, because obviously, no shit, I'm just one guy, of course I'm only speaking for myself, of course I'm not speaking on the whole of what's best for everyone. Of course I can only see, uh, only uh, share what I think from my own perspective, and I acknowledge that it's a limited perspective and a necessarily uninformed perspective, and that people can disagree with me. And that's why I want to have that debate, I want to have that discussion, but I really uh, shy away from letting the impression be had of me that I don't care about anything, and everyone else is wrong, and I'm the only one who knows what he's talking about. Because I don't. And I do care. <laughs> I don't care because I cared and got hurt. George Carlin. The late, great George Carlin said, Scratch any cynic and you'll find a disappointed idealist. And that's how I feel. I feel disappointed. Not angry. Not... <sighs> not, like, full of myself. I feel disappointed, and I feel like we can do better, and I feel like I can do better. And I just want to see people do better. And so I do scream and rage and go, why aren't you doing better? Uh, but it's not because I know what's best. It's not because I know what better is. Because I don't. And I want people to scream that back at me. I want to have that discussion. I want to have that debate. Don't think I'm not open to disagreement and argument. Just because I'm not saying what doesn't need to be said. Or shouldn't need to be said. It should be automatically implied. It should automatically go from, like, the ground floor that, oh, you are a one human individual... And you can only speak as a one human individual based on what you have individually witnessed and experienced and gone through and learned in your very extremely limited span of time on this fucking vast, massive green earth that's also just a tiny, insignificant blue speck of dust in the light. It's a complicated fucking thing. Maybe we should talk it out. That's all I'm saying. No, obviously, just never talk to me again because you have no empathy and I hate you and we're not friends anymore. Never talk to me again. Okay, that works too. Good, good, good talk. Really gonna progress as a species with that mentality.